Okay, I'll get started. There's three guys picking, right? Oh. Sorry. City. I don't know. What are you going to say? You still got shit in your teeth. What? You never got it out. I thought you said I did. No, I didn't say you did. I said okay. that you were in the right tooth. Dude, zoom in on that. <laughs> That's just fucked up. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to Three Guys Picking, the most electrifying cable access show in Chicago. Very <laughs> also the world. Why, why am I using my radio voice? Well, hey, I'm Crazy Tyler here. And with me is my crazy sidekick, Tur- I mean, Brody. <laughs> ow! Ow! Yeah! And Dave the Extra. Hey! The silent but incredibly good looking guy. Incredibly, incredibly good looking. <laughs> I'm so incredibly good looking. <laughs> what are you knocking over beer for? You're knocking over beer. I'm not knocking over. We have a very special show for you here today. Yeah, what is it? Ha ha ha! Did you see that? <laughs> That's like in Bloodsport when he's blind. You're supposed to introduce, bring us in, introduce us, tell us who the guest is. That's your job. God, this guy sucks. You're just mad because I beat your ass last you show. You didn't beat my ass last show. You didn't pin me. I got it turned around. No, it was the ref a wasn't paying attention. You were not for a fight count. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can only count it two anyway, you hot little bastard. He's the one that would be kind, so he just called you a hot little bastard. <laughs> he says that because he's trying to use his Elvis tricks on you. <laughs> Elvis tricks? Elvish. 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 <laughs> this is great. You know, I apologize to. This is like Cat in the Hat special. I apologize when you get this and see this is the show that we made about you because it's obviously somebody didn't prepare. Not, not me, not this guy. I'm with the guy on the other side over there. Don't want to mention any names. I'm not pointing any fingers or anything, but. <laughs> are you through? Are you through? Well, see what you can do better. I'm still waiting for you to do your job. My job's easy, I don't really have to do it. It feels so good when it hits my lips. <laughs> oh, dude, I got it. Oh, oh, yeah, what the hell is that? Anyway, we have a very special show You've had that for you here today. For two shows Legendary now. country singer, musician, guitarist extraordinaire, Shooter Jennings. Shooter Jennings program. is on the show tonight. No, anyway, That's he's right. a legend in the making, first of all. I mean, come on. Don't be a dick. How's I being a dick? I gave him a nice compliment. He's a shooter. He's a legend in the making. Yeah, I love him. That's what I awesome. said. You said he's a legend already. You're putting him past his prime. You're saying he's done. Shooter, you're not done, man. You're just starting. You're the man. You met Shooter. Shooter's, Shooter's a great guy. 
You're grasping. 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 You are grasping. You are grasping. He's grasping. Who resorts to violence when he knows that he can't keep going on with the words? I can't think. I have to hit. Hey, hey, enough about you two. We're yeah. shooter. Shooter. So we got Shooter Jennings, son of legendary country star Waylon Jennings. He's uh, got his new album out, and he is a really cool dude. Uh, we were able to sit down with him when uh, him and his band, the 357s. If that's wrong, I'm sorry. Shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. Was, well, eh. You did um, a shoot me joke for Shooter? Well, last time we did this episode, because we're redoing this one, by the way. Because I was like, Dave wasn't here, we gotta redo it. What is this, the man cow show? Was going, he was going, bang, 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 bang the whole time. I'm like, dude, that's not funny. No, yeah, dude, I'm doing the Mick Foley thing. I'm like, yeah, but it's not, his name's Shooter. <laughs> Shooter McGavin. <laughs> I'm like, you're an idiot. And I'm like, let's get Dave here. So we can have <laughs> yeah, an extra. Right. So he can sit there, and he can make you obsolete, basically. And we can have a good shot. And then you're gonna go through, hey, I shot. Urgh, First it's a shooter you're gonna, show. You're gonna do the shooter again, and you should quote that one about like being in the sand. Go, go by, go by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I eat pieces of shit for you, like for breakfast. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> hey, check out a little bit of shooter again. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shooter Jennings. Drink your way, Coke. Yes. That was horrible. You're horrible. You're horrible. You're horrible. You're horrible. You're horrible. It's my fault. <laughs> hey, Three Guys Picking has an incredible special guest for you tonight. We've got uh, budding country superstar, Mr. Shooter Jennings. Shooter. Hey, man. Welcome to Three Guys Picking. Good to meet y'all. Now, uh, Thanks for having me. I gotta say, before I start, in, in an attempt to not only butter you up, but also to sound as sincere as possible, I'd right. say it's an honor and privilege to have the son of country legends as well as, like you say, uh, Thank you. you know, a great musician in your own right. We, we hope that uh, not Thank only you your first album, but everything else follows it up. Thank you very much. How's that for Bucky? Uh, that's nice. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, so you're on your uh, your headline tour now, uh, coming out after after playing with Toby Keith. Uh, yeah. How's it feel to be be the guy at the front and center? Oh, it's great. I mean, the whole time we were playing with Toby, we were doing shows like this in between. So it's like I think we would have gone crazy. We were playing only 15 minutes a night, 20 minutes a night with him. So, uh, but this is our favorite thing to do. This is the, this is the best right here. We just finished our second record, almost done with it, and it's coming out next year. So we're going to be out for great. a long time doing this stuff. So. Well, that's just, that just ruined my, my uh, 15th question. Ah, there you but, go, man. That's We're right. already on it, man. Your album is out there right now. Yes, sir. Let's put the O back in country. <laughs> um, I gotta say, it's brilliant. And it's oh, a good thing you me. chose that letter, not like, let's put the R back in country, because that really doesn't... It's not as funny. That's not as right? funny. Maybe if you're like a pirate, you like thought about R the C. In, but, uh, <laughs> you know, R. Tell us a little bit about how you came up with that. I'm you sure know, you that was my girlfriend came times, up with it. My girlfriend came up with it and kept saying, "You got." It's, I don't know how she did. We were talking one night, and, and she said something. She said it, and, and I thought it was you no. Know, I was like, "No way, no way!" And I just kept saying, "No, no." And then everybody else kept saying, "Yeah, it's a great idea," you know. So uh, I got to give that one to her. But uh, but you know, it's it's just it was just a little tongue in cheek thing, man. You know, but we we're just having fun. You know, with the whole thing. No offense to anybody. Uh, you know, of now, uh, title of the next album then, is it Electric Rodeo. Funny? It's called Electric Rodeo, not near as funny. <laughs> That's alright, it kind of harkens back to those 70s country, kind of seems like the thing that you're trying to bring back as yeah, well. Yeah, it's cool, get back it's to real that cool. Man, it's much yeah. more extreme than this record, so it's cool. It goes way more into old country than this one, and way more into rock and roll. But that's a whole different thing. It's good. It's gonna be cool, man. We're just excited to be out on the road, being able to play all this stuff, and having a good time, and not trying not to screw up too much. Man. <laughs> Well, it's good that you're bringing that kind of country back as well, because, I mean, what, what do you think is the state of country right now? It's it's, it's, gone, it's gotten so far away from the, from the yeah. legend stuff. And it's, it's different. It's just not my style, and I just don't really get it, and I hope that it's going to come around to something that 
seems like we all like better, you know. It seems like it's coming around. I mean, obviously, people so. like you know, people like Toby Keith, and uh, even even in the rock world, you know, Kid Rock, you know, becoming friends with David Allen Coe, who I'm, I'm yeah. sure you know, and yeah, you know, just getting people back around the country. Yeah, it's cool. It is true. Thanks to people like them, they're getting it back around in the old spirit of things. So. Now I saw a, a magazine that had an interview with you in it. It's called Grits Magazine. Yeah, I haven't and, seen it. And you're on yet. the cover too. I haven't so, seen it yet, but so that's awesome. That's cool. But yeah, there's there's a, a photo in there, and it's, it turns out it's also the photo that's inside your, your CDs. You're sitting there at a table. There's a couple beer bottles there, which is pretty cool. You look look closer, and it looks like it's Amstel Light. It was. Is that Amstel the kind Light. of image you want to get out there, Amstel Light? <laughs> I'm just asking. You know. Oh man. That's a good question, man. That's a good. I mean, Pat, you really you looked know, at that PBR, picture pretty Schmitz hard, didn't you? you know, I had to see what it was. That's pretty funny. I was that's hoping it was Lone Star or something. I'm like, no, it was Amstel Light, man. No, man. I mean, that's it. I was shot that shit in L.A. and that's about the best you can get. I like Coors Light or I like, I like my Amstel Light a little bit. I'll take one from the team on that one. I mean, I know some other Any people that like it. Like, I mean, beer. it's better than some dark shit. I can't stand the dark shit. So it's like, uh, if it tastes like flavored water, that's basically the way I like it. It gets me drunk, you know. This is the Gibbs. No, it's the Gibbs. This is the brothers Gibb. <laughs> yeah, the Gibbs. <laughs> and welcome back to our special Shooter <laughs> Jennings program. I'm your host, Tyler. And with me is Dave the Extra. And filling up the last seat on the end of the row is Shooter McGavin. I'm not Shooter McGavin. That's the guy from Happy Gilmore. I'm Brody. Brody. I'm Brody. So I guess we're not going to get anything out of him except for fatness and stink, so we, we better run the show. Okay. So yeah, we got Shooter Jennings here on the show. Hope you guys enjoyed that first part with him. It was awesome. We had the chance to sit down and talk with him um, down when he was playing here in Chicago yeah. at uh, Joe's. 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 Joe's down on that was off a great, of uh, Weed great Street. Venue, I think. Great place for a show. Nice, nice small stage. Crowd was packed in. The place was freaking jammed. I it mean, was crazy. But I'm going to ask you, because you're not really a, a country guy. I'm not. You know? I am um, not. I will wholeheartedly say I'm you know, not a country by, guy. By coming on Three Guys Picking, you've been exposed, exposed to a lot to of the country. Yes. I mean, growing up with me, because we're, we're really good friends. We've grown up together a lot, you know? And, um, you know, you, I got you into, you know, Johnny Cash and all that stuff. And you like him and Kenny Rogers and things like that. But, you know, I think your, your horizons are being broadened here on Three Guys Picking. True. I mean, can, can I say that? Yeah. I and, can say that. And, and you know, like got you into the Avery Brothers a little bit. You've got a little bit about them. And then we got you. We got you to meet the son of a country legend, which is awesome. Shooter Jennings, which is awesome. So yeah, I mean, tell us about is, your expectations or or your thoughts or your bewilderment as you went into Joe's that night. Well, I think uh, you know a little bit has to do with you know I'm coming in, don't know really a, a lot about uh, Shooter to begin with. I knew some, obviously he's he's uh, Waylon's son and and things like that. But what I liked was that it's not the pop country. Yeah. You know, I think that that's really why it is that I'm so against country. Any any time that people are so happy because their tractor's sexy, that that is a freaking joke. To me. So you know, I, I think I like. She you know, really the, turns me on. And the fact that you're actually stopping to sing that is uh, what I wasn't stopping. Me. I thought you were gonna keep going. Um, the the fact that uh, you know he's he's kind of gone back to. He's to tapping into the roots. To the roots. It's I real think country. that's important. Classic you know, and, country. And, uh, you know, it was great to, to watch. And I really liked watching the crowd's reaction to what it is that he was doing and, and how into it that they were. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, what was the song? Fourth of July, Fourth I think. Fourth of July, yeah. That was a great song. And, and you let really, me and the, and really people really, in the front. Yes. People really responded to that. And, and uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was a very good show. Yeah. That's cool. and, and I don't like country. No, no, you don't. And that's the cool thing about Shooter. And, like and you'll, you'll learn maybe a little bit from uh, from the interview here. But you know, he's he's definitely had his influences from rock and roll. I mean, he grew up, you know, listening to rock and roll and heavy metal. You know, born, you know, from going from Nashville to L.A. He's the kid's seen everything. He's he's got experience from all over the place. Influences from here and there. I mean, shit, Johnny Cash with his freaking Godfather. Johnny Cash is that, that's my that's my boy. That's my man. You know, and uh, he plays his dad in, in the Walk the Line movie. And it has a scene with with uh, Joaquin Phoenix as Johnny Cash. And, you know, he grew up with those guys, with the highwaymen, with Willie, and, of course, with his dad, Waylon, and just all those country legends. Then he goes to L.A., so he's, he's in the rock scene. The motherfucker played with Guns N' Roses. Fill in for Axl Rose. I mean, if this guy, I mean, can cross all genres and, and obviously be he accepted. filled in for Axl? Yeah. Was Axl late for a gig or something? 
I don't, I don't really know. I know that's a rare occurrence. <laughs> oh, you're, you're working. <laughs> you, you're, you're kind of like the axle of our show. The only thing is, you show up and don't do anything. At least he doesn't show up when he doesn't do anything. Now, the axle of our show, who was an um, hour and a half late? Today, uh -oh, you last time and the time before. What are you talking? Hey, about? oh, yeah. that's it. Get over hey, it, pal. I'd rather be pretty than on time. <laughs> Over two. <laughs> Over two. Unlucky. <laughs> I tried. Oh. I tried. That's the way it goes. But um, yeah, so uh, check out a little bit more of, uh, of Shooter performing and or talking to us uh, via the interview that we did. Via the. Vis a vis, voulez-vous, voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Funny man, that's yeah, funny. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about your sound because obviously you're out in LA for a while and we're trying to still stay, live there. Yeah, you know, get out there, get away from Nashville, get get your own sound. You're very into rock and roll. Um, how do you how do you come around to mix country with rock or even come back to country for your album? You know what? I just kind of got out there and was doing that, and and then I I had started just going back to it myself. I really, I wasn't trying to cross it or go back or anything. It's really just. Kind of all the music I like somehow into one kind of style a little bit. I don't know how to explain that, but it was just the most true to the kind of music that I like. It's like, I, I like stuff that sounds like old Hank Jr., old Waylon, and all that stuff. And I like stuff that sounds like Zeppelin, and like, I don't see why it, it can't, if a band can pull it off, why can't that be the deal, you know? It's like, so. It's cool. I don't know, that's the best way to describe it. I never really came or made a conscious effort to go to country back or anything. It was just that in my other band, I, I really wanted to explore old country a lot more and I couldn't do it as much. And this time with these guys, with Leroy, Ted and Brian and the 357s, they, they're the shit. They're the best band in the world, man. They're amazing. They can hit, they can sound like Hank Senior and they can sound like Van Halen and it just works, you know? That's cool. I mean, you've always had the country with you, and obviously you grew up with rock and roll, which is cool. And you even got to cut your chops and play with Guns N' Roses a couple shows, which has got to be pretty kick That was crazy. That was awesome. And now, now they're out with Velvet Revolver as well. You know, in between there, was there any any time that you know maybe you you would have jumped in with Velvet Revolver? Or they asked me. They that? asked me to. They they asked me to do it, and I said no. I had my other band. Wow. I always thought about that. Like they awesome. give me shit too when I see them and stuff, but. What, what would have happened? What would it have sounded like? I don't know. Well, I just happens? thought, my whole thing was I thought like in LA or in like some place that appreciates it, that's cool, but like in Bumfuck, Indiana, it's like Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. You know, that's what I thought about it. I didn't think of it like it was going to be like whatever, but I, it still was like, that would have been crazy. I found a video of it the other day, and yeah. a fan gave it to me. I, I haven't had one, and a fan gave me a, a DVD of the show. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but you're here, and, and if, you, if you wouldn't have, if you would have taken that, we wouldn't have got low back in country. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good thing. Put the G back in country. But uh, let's talk about, um, you got an upcoming movie role in uh, Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash movie with Joaquin Phoenix, that'd Reese Witherspoon. It comes out November 18th. I just saw it the other day. It's great. It's so fucking good, man. What's it like to step in the shoes and actually play your dad? You know what? I was. It's, I'm only in it for a really small period of time. They make a bigger deal out of it than it really is, but I'm only in it for a couple scenes. But it was really awesome just going down there and being a part of it and meeting everybody and kind of all coming together for that vibe, for Johnny Cash and what it was. And it just was cool. We all became friends immediately and just kind of just had a lot of fun and got to kind of see what Johnny and Waylon and them really saw it like with the sets and everything. What it maybe life was like back then or something, you know. It was cool. Uh, Very lucky to be a part of from, uh, from Johnny Cash. From yeah, like, man. I was. Know? Yeah, he was. He was my godfather, man. I was around him a lot when they did the high room and stuff, and I was at. He was really, really, unbelievably connected to his like spirituality and everything. And he'd talk, and, and I, he'd ask me how I was doing, and try and give me advice about stuff, and it would always be from like a really 
heartfelt place, you know. Really an unbelievable individual. And just when he walked in the room, you're just, you're just like, holy shit, that's Johnny Cash, you know. Yeah, because he's so. been my favorite my whole life, and uh, it's just, it's incredible to know that, you know, you had a chance to grow up and know. I know, I feel very fortunate to be around those people, you know. I just wish, like, when you're, like, little and you're around that shit, you're like, you don't want to hang out with fucking Willie. You want to play with your toys. That's like dad's friend or something. So it's like, now I wish. I'm like, fucking, what the fuck are you thinking when you're, like, five years old? Sorry, I'm not supposed to be cussing at all. We said country. Hey, what's up, and welcome back to Three Guys Picking, the most electrifying cable access show in Chicago. The Toro del Mundo. We are in the midst, the middle, and or near the end of our Shooter Jennings interview. Shooter Jennings. And uh, we just caught him over at Joe's on Wheat Street for the uh, Let's Put the O Back in Country tour. That's pretty funny. Right? No, that's awesome. Country that's awesome. Country tour? Put the O Back in Country. Yeah, you know, I should have had my shirt. Oh, I got you. I got him. I got him a Shooter Jennings shirt too, which is cool. It was which is cool. cool shirt. Because you're not a country guy, but you know it's a good shirt. You wear it. You know, the Shooter was pretty kick-ass. He was cool to us. Very, very down to earth. Very mellow. Very laid back. Very relaxed. You know, nice talking to us. And you know, posed for a picture with uh, with me and you. Um, I, oh, I don't have. I, I really do want to say that I thought one of the coolest things were the little stickers. For uh, the, oh, the, the backstage press. pass, yeah, the stickers, backstage yeah. pass sticker. Yeah. It was awesome. It was like this. Don't you have it? It here? was like this ass, and it said, "This gets your ass in here for free." Yeah, or that's whatever. Really it was, funny, that yeah. was just awesome. That's so original. I thought that was pretty funny. Absolutely, and I, you know, and he, to be honest, he, he's an original uh, artist as well. Um, you know, doing going back to the roots, doing the traditional stuff, uh, you know, the classic stuff, but Along um, with some rock. but in his own, yeah, he's adding all this other stuff into it. And um, yeah, let's see here. We've got uh, there it is. See, this gets your ass in here. So and this is there it is. So um, that's what he's talking about. And you know, put on a great show. It did a lot of his uh, stuff from uh, from his yeah, album. Uh, did some covers as well. And I thought one of the, the best songs of the night for me anyway was when he did a cover of uh, David Allen Coe's uh, "The Ride," which is one of I think the greatest country songs ever made. Um, it's one of my favorites. I've done it at uh, karaoke numerous times and always, <laughs> always get a standing ovation. What? What, from the one person that stayed? Either way, bartender? either way. <laughs> I even wrote um, a really cool short story based on that uh, what, song, what, what, actually, what, which what, I'm hoping you Actually, most of the people soon. that are still there and cheering probably couldn't stand Well, no, no. <laughs> let's, let's hear. This is what actually happened. He cleared the room and the bartender's like, yay, thanks for ruining our business. It no, maybe it, was, maybe it was like closing time, so he was clapping like, thank you for getting everybody out on time, so that we didn't have to do it or so you, guys, you guys finished? You guys finished? Or what? You finished? You're finished! So You'll be the one that's being finished! You're finished. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, he does a great cover of, a, of, a, of an artist like, like Dan on Kogu. I've seen a couple times as well. Um, in, in concert, live. He did. Tried to get him on three guys picking, you know, but was, uh, um, we couldn't. Was drunk, but uh, you know, the day my mom got out of prison. This is supposed to be funny. <laughs> I'm telling Dave the oh, story. Okay. And um, I went to you know, so maybe sometime we can uh, still get you know, David on the um, show. But right we had the we had Shooter, which is awesome. Truck. And thanks for coming on the show. Over my train. I hope you enjoyed this, this one. And good luck to everything to do, Shooter. And well, I guess all I got to say is. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, I see, what I just said here, to that was the greatest country to song recall. ever made. The things we used to say and do, I don't want to get over you. We only have one viewer. Please I don't, don't want to get away. over you. A fresh roll of quarters, same old songs, missing you through and through. I don't want to get over you. Did I skip a verse? Or Probably. Line? I skipped a line. Probably. I don't want to get over you. Zip it. Zip it. They ought to give me the world. It's a prize. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a little bit of a uh, sample for you of Waylon Jennings, one of the greatest songs he's ever done. World is a prize. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy what we have to show you, Shooter. Go check him out. Put the O back in country is his album. <laughs> and if you get a chance to check it's it out, every time I hear um, it. go ahead and pick that up. Pick him up. To, uh, go see him in concert. 
Check them out and Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash movie, which is really, really awesome. To be honest, I... They're talking Oscars. I cried like six times. They're talking movie. Oscars. I'm, I'm being serious. I mean, I, the only person in my life that's been with me as long as, as anybody that wasn't my family has been Johnny Cash. I've been listening to him my whole life. In fact, I wish I actually had him in my life longer than my brother, but that's just another story. But when, it's, you know, when somebody that, that, that is with you for that long... You know, but you never met him. It's, it's kind of a weird relationship that Johnny and I had. I listened to him. I knew who he was. Um, he didn't know anything about me. I and I think he still doesn't want to know. Oh, did you actually so. come up for air there? So, shooter, thanks for coming on. Three guys picking. It was yes. awesome. Great, great show. Great stuff. Great show. And you know, to be honest, we're a great show too. Yes, we're a great show too. So. Check you back next time. What? Ah, you missed. Make sure. How deep is your? How deep is my love? <laughs> it's it's so uh, Here's the three guys picking the greatest show ever. It is the three guys picking is the most rocking fucking show there is on television. Period. <laughs> Well, I wanted to thank you for uh, joining us here. We've got a couple party gifts for you. Oh, yeah, so, man. Uh, please, uh, yeah, thank you. Out with pride. Awesome. Oh, look at this. That's just got a couple of our shows on there. It's got all of our Tesla shows. Look at that. You've had some crazy guests on here, huh? In fact, little known fact about the t shirt. It's Frank Hannon from Tesla's favorite t shirt, so much so that he's gone through three of them already. So, uh, oh, dude, that's just, great. Uh, it's a good company. Look at that, man. How was uh, Bruce Campbell? He was funny. He pissed him off, so it was really funny. He pissed him off? He pissed Bruce off. So How'd you piss Bruce off? He didn't like my question. Um, you know, he's in the movie Fargo. When the kidnappers are at the, ho at the house watching a soap opera on TV, Bruce is in the soap opera. And because Bruce's friends made the movie, I thought that was like an inside joke. And so I asked him about it jokingly because he is Mr. Smartass. But he got mad. the whole interview, but it, it clearly bothered him. And then somebody asked him about that same question the next day, and he was irked about it. I think that... He I'll ask him, it, I made him... He didn't want it in the movie, because like, it wasn't a joke. It was a real soap opera he did, and it got canceled, so he was kind of upset yeah. about it. Why, man? I, that's stupid. He's just being an idiot. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll say, hey, man, I saw you in the... Jesse and uh, the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, movie. man. Now, I gotta ask though, uh, did they even come to you to ask you to be the balladeer at all and be the narrator? No, I tried, dude. Yeah. I fought tooth and nail trying. I sent, we re-recorded the song and sent it to them and they didn't take it. It's horrible. And then I called them and sent in a voiceover of me doing a bunch of, I auditioned for that and I didn't get it. So they eventually, I think they eventually felt sorry for us and threw and put Busting Baylor County in the movie because yeah. it's in the movie in a part. But it's not on the soundtrack. No, <laughs> right. They're throwing me Thanks, a bomb. Guys. Yeah, no, they were really nice guys, but it's like they were, it just, it's Hollywood. Yeah, it's Hollywood. I probably would have tried to fight tooth and nail to get on the Jessica Simpson video, but it oh, just made me. I know, man. Did you see that? Yeah, man. If you were on mute, it was a lot better. I've never wanted to be a 69 <laughs> Charger more than when I saw that. Yeah, Holy man. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, I want to get back to, back to your album, get a couple of thoughts on uh, some of your songs. Sure. Um, the song that's out there right now, uh, 4th of July. Kick-ass song, um, really great sound, so I just wanted to Thank you, man. get your that. thoughts on it. Hey man, it's the most poppy thing, you know, out there that we've done, but it, it, it was just a, a real song. I went on a trip with my girlfriend and we went to go see Willie Nelson's 4th of July picnic and it just was, we rented an RV and went together and it was just a fucking blast and shit, I'm sorry, got a quick cousin. Um, <laughs> No, we had a wonderful time, and it was like we. Uh, I just kind of looked back at that, and wrote a song about it, and everybody liked it. So I was like, "Well, that's weird." You know, you know? It's not my favorite song on the record, but no. it's sentiment-wise, it's my favorite. But not but one of them. Sometimes that, that matters more. Sometimes it always matters. It's sentiment, you know, what, what feels more. So, uh, Lonesome Blues, very, very, very country. Very, uh, I love Leroy wrote that. Uh, Leroy wrote that okay. song. Uh, Ted wrote. 
Steady at the Wheel, okay. which we just shot another video for. Good. Which we'll give to you guys if you want to play it. Right. We want anybody to play it. That'd be awesome, yeah. So, um, because it's rock and most country is not going to play it, so. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, we'll, we'll get there from uh, talking about busting in Baylor County. We, we'll, you know, uh, we hear it's pretty much a true story, which I 100% completely true. understand, you know. I, um, something happened to me like that in a little podunk town called Juliet near here. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but it was for prostitution, and they didn't let me go. And, and they were like, you're on the three-ass picking. Like, yeah, stay in here. Two more nights. Shit. But uh -oh. cool song. And, uh, the thing about it, though, is it seems to have a little Charlie Daniels feel to it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, kind of like that down in Georgia. Uh, you know, Leroy wrote the verses on it. When we were doing that song, we got busted, and it was like the next day, and Leroy wrote all these little verses, and, and we just kind of came out, and I, and I put in the choruses, and, and, and did, it just kind of it just kind of came together, and it became this like uh, little cult song that we yeah. made up, you know? And so it was, it, it does. I mean, Leroy was so, was so fucking good about that. He got, Chopping word, like making it really funny and wordy like that. And did a really good job of that. And uh, of course, it's like Devil Down to Georgia because nobody else is making songs like that, so somebody's got to. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's just got that, uh, you know, taking a trip out to LA. It's got that feel to it, you know, that. Yeah. That, you know, it's pretty cool. So. Cool, man. Thank um, you. Towards the end of the album, then, after Daddy's Farm, you got that little nice My message song for from you. Uh, Hank yeah. Jr. What's the oh, secret, oh, song? Oh, yeah. secret song right after that? It starts at what, like 435? Yeah, I mean, we're going to make a real song out of that at some point. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I mean, that's one of my favorite songs I've ever written, but it, um, you know, I, I, I had done it, and we hadn't really, that was how we recorded it, and I just kind of said, this, I wanted it to go on the album, but I didn't know where it was really going to fit on the album, so I just thought, just throw it on there. But a lot of, it's really funny, a lot of, like, big biker guys, yeah. Like they're like my favorite songs that hidden track, man. You know, you would, you would think that they would be all like on the rock, but it's like big dudes are like, man, that's my favorite song. Sing that one. Why didn't you sing that one? So that's a, that's a real honest song, you know. Just that's my favorite kind of song. That's so. awesome. Now, how did you come up with with starting it at 4:35 into the song, or is it just random? Or? I just said throw it, throw it. I just, just told them I said throw it after the Hank Jr. message and see what happens. So yeah.